Okay, now that we've created an OU and we've created a user or two, let's talk about managing groups. Now, the reason we use groups is because it becomes much easier to manage permissions for users if we group them together rather than doing them individually. It makes our life way, way easier. So let's talk about how we're going to create a group. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my group inside the same OU as my users. That is not necessary. Right? You can put them in the users, the groups in the users folder. Some people create an organizational unit just for groups so that they'll always all be in the same place. It just depends on where you want. The point is users do not have to be in the same OU as the group that you're wanting to add them to. So I'm going to add a new group here. Right click, go to new and group. Now, groups take very, very little, but there are a couple of things we want to be aware of. So we're going to give them the uh, group name. I'm going to call this Marketing Users. And you'll notice our pre-Windows 2000, like we talked about in previous video, it's for backwards compatibility. Normally, it'll come up with its own. You can leave it alone. Okay, but we have three or a couple of things here. Three options here, two options here. Let's talk through those real quick. So number one, let's talk group type. We have two options, a security group and a distribution group. Now a security group becomes a security principle. And basically all that means is you can assign rights to the security group. A distribution group you can't. In fact, the only reason we have a distribution group, honestly, is for when we're working with email systems like Exchange. Basically, we can add a bunch of people to a group, email the group, it goes to everybody in the group. All right, that's, that's the only thing it is. It's the only reason we have a distribution group. So most of the time, we're not going to worry about that. We're going to do a security group. Now, we've got three different group scopes. And we'll talk about this probably a little more as we go along. But let me define each one of these real quick and what their purpose is. A universal group is something that we use in a multi-domain environment. It can take users or groups from across a multi-domain environment. It's very helpful for that, but in a single domain environment, we really don't need universal groups. Instead, what we do is we use global groups and domain local groups. Now, a global group is intended to aggregate users. So what we'll do is we'll take an R we'll put our users into a global group. A domain local group is intended to have permission to sign, permissions assigned to it. So we need to give somebody read permissions or modify permissions to a particular set of files in a folder. We would assign that to the domain local group. So we put users in the global group. We put the domain, create a domain local group with the permissions that we want, and then we add the global group as a member of the domain local group. And that's how we set permissions. Now, we're going to talk about that a little bit more when we get into working with permissions. So for the moment, what I want to do is I want to create a global group for marketing users that's going to include both of my users in my marketing department. And then when I add somebody else to my marketing department, I want to get, have them have the same rights. I just add them to the group and we're done. That's where groups make things much, much easier. So I'm going to click OK, and that creates my group. So very, very little that goes into creating a group, right? Now, I need to add my users to the group. And there are two ways I can go about this. And I'm going to do both. One is I can add them from the group. Number two is I can add them from the user. So let me show you how, and then we'll talk about when you would use one over the other. So I'm going to start by double-clicking on my marketing users group. So here you see we can change some things around, set a description, set an email address. Yes, I can email a security group, just like I can a distribution group, and it works just fine. I can also do some changing here. Notice I can't change from a global group to a domain local group, but I can change from a global group to a universal group. Just in case you're curious, by the way, you can change from a universal group to a domain local group. So if I created a global group and I needed it to, to, by accident, because I needed it to be domain local, I can convert it to universal, save it, go into my properties again, convert it to domain local, save it. Okay, members shows me who is a part of this group. Member of shows me which other groups this group is a part of. So I would have my goal is to have my two users as members, and then later on when I start assigning permissions, I might create something that's going to give me rights to a domain local group that's going to give me rights to files or folders, and I would add that as a member of. So this would be a member of that group. 
So I can add here. So I'm going to click add and I'm going to type in Grant. And I'm going to do a check, click on check name. And if it finds my user, this is what it's going to do. It's going to give me the whole thing and then it's going to underline it. Now I can do multiple users like this by typing their name, semicolon, the next name, semicolon, the next name, semicolon. And so this will allow me to add multiple users to the same group at one time. I'm going to click OK. We'll see Grant Harris is here. We're going to click Apply and OK. Now the other way I can do this is from the user side. So I open up the user account. I go to Member of, and this shows the groups that this user is a member of, and I'm going to add, and I'm going to search for marketing users. And I'm just going to do marketing because that should be enough. I do my check name. It comes up and identifies marketing users, underlines it for me. Yay, found the right group. I know this works. So I click OK, and now it shows that they're a member of the marketing users. Well, will be when I hit apply. And then, okay, so now I've added both of them to this. And if I open up my marketing users, members, you're going to see both of them are added right here. So why would I do one over the other? Here's rule of thumb. If I'm going to add a user to multiple groups at a time, then I will go to the user account, do member of, and then I can put in, when I do add, I can put multiple groups here. Same thing we talked about before, just put a semicolon between the groups, and it will add them to all of the groups at the same time. If I'm going to add multiple users to the same group, then I'm going to go to the group level, do members, add, and I will just separate them out. Steve, Frank... Most of these guys don't exist, by the way, so I'm not going to have a check name for it. Harvey, Greg, and now when I go to check names, it should find all of them, except they don't exist, so I'm not actually going to click on it. And then it'll add them all in to multiple users into one group at the same time. Okay, there we go. That is working with groups. So we'll create groups, and then later on we'll add users to groups. We'll take users out of groups. Let me show you how to do that real quick. Go to members, select the one we want, remove. And away they go. And then if we ever need to, we can simply delete the group. If you delete the group, it does not delete all the users that are part of it, unlike OUs. So if you delete the group, all it does is take out the group. Okay, there we go. That is your quick overview of managing groups in Active Directory.